Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm taking you through my back routine that I do every single week at home. With very limited equipment, back and biceps day is one of my favorite days, usually a Tuesday. And for me, working my back has really helped me form that hourglass figure that I've always wanted. When I started losing weight, uh, the majority of the weight that I was holding was on my lower body, mainly my thighs. My glutes were kind of big, but they did not have like the shape that I wanted them to have. I had a lot of weight in my midsection, my belly and my back, but as I started started to lose weight, I did notice that my upper body was significantly smaller. It was definitely something I had to work through. I preferred the look that I have now, which is a little bit wider shoulders. And overall, I just feel like I have a more balanced look. I really like feeling feminine, strong, and working out my upper body has definitely helped me transform that. I absolutely love this back workout. If you go back on my channel, you can see that I did have a back routine or the workouts that I did that helped me shape my back. And if you compare those to the workouts that I do now, they're still pretty similar. I love that because that just shows consistency and how it can work in your favor. I'm gonna be targeting the back and the biceps. You wanna always make sure that you're warming up before a back workout. So definitely do some mobility work before, warm up with five minutes of cardio, and then get started. So first we're going to start with Gorilla Rows. This is a relatively new workout for me. If you don't have two kettlebells, you can do this with one kettlebell. I fell in love with these. I think that the motion of actually putting down the weight and then picking it back up really helps lengthen your muscles. Some tips for Gorilla Rows, my biggest tips is gonna be you're taking the setup as seriously as you're taking your workout what you want to think of is that your feet are going to be a little bit wider because you do have to be closer to the floor you want your back to be as neutral as possible hips hinged as if you're going to do an rdl it's very strong and you are not curving your back or over rounding your shoulders or make sure your back is at a neutral position and that way you can start lowering those shoulders when you put the kettlebells down you want to lower those shoulders so you don't want your shoulders to be here you want your shoulders to be down here and in your back pocket and then you can start rowing and you want to pull slightly higher than your belly button and when you bring that weight up you want that elbow to stay pretty close to your body And then extending putting it down picking it up with the other hand and do it here if you have two kettlebells then it's going to be easier because you can just press on the kettlebell that's on the floor as you bring the other one up so you want to just make sure that that's the one this arm is the one doing the work when you're pulling up exhale when you're coming up And if you don't have kettlebells, then I do have an option for you, which is the seesaw rows. So the seesaw rows is basically you just coming down here with one and then coming up like a seesaw. So you're performing this motion without twisting too much. You're pretty much just uh, trying to stay balanced in your core and just making the movement with your back. It's, I tend to stay within the 10 to 12 rep range, if the weights, if the dumbbells are too low for you, for you to extend to the floor, use a platform, elevate those weights, and then put them there uh, so that you don't have to overextend coming to the floor. One thing that you can see in the middle of this set is that I was really struggling. This was day two of my period. And I was really struggling with cramps. Take a little break in between. Catch your breath again and then reset yourself in that position and finish your set. For the next workout, it is an underhand row. Grab your dumbbells here, underhand, pull towards your belly button. Hip hinge, send those hips back, 
Keep your core tight and your back neutral. These you want to make sure your chin is tucked as well and uh, you're contracting that back when you're pulling up. It is important for you not to overextend to round your back and then pull up again and overextend that back here. So you don't want to curve your back. You want to make sure your back is always staying as straight as possible. And that doesn't mean arching your back here because that's gonna put a lot of pressure on your low back. I've really been liking them. So with the underhand rows, what we're focusing on is working those lats. I have been doing these since I started lifting to do workouts for my back. This with a bar, you can do this with dumbbells. You are exhaling when you're contracting those muscles. For our next workout, we're going to do wide rib rows, which with these, we're targeting that upper back. I, with these, I have been able to see the biggest difference in my upper back. I really challenge myself, but you want to make sure you start slow. You can use a barbell for these, but I have been enjoying using dumbbells for these simply because of the grip that I can have. If you choose to use a barbell, make sure you have a wider grip, hence the name. You have a wider grip and it's overhand, not underhand. So we're doing overhand here. You're pulling closer to your chest rather than down here. But again, if you pull a little bit too high, you might feel it more on your shoulders and it also might cause some tension on your shoulders. So play around to see where that's going to feel good. I have noticed that if I grip here and then I pull here, this neutral hand position right here, and I still target my back. So this is something that you have to experiment with form and where it feels good for you and where it's not going to feel like your shoulder is clicking and stuff like that because especially as a beginner when you're just starting to work out those things happen. These same form you're going to do a hip hinge as if you're going to RDL, core tight, chin tucked and you want to make sure with these your feet are a little bit closer together. If you're going to the gym, you can use the cable machine to do these. Uh, you can do a seated row and these are you know alternatives that you can do but these are amazing and they really work your upper back okay so that's it for the back workouts and then at the end of my back workout i always include bicep workouts so for my bicep workouts they stay pretty much the same lately i've been focusing on bicep curls and sometimes I throw in some hammer curls. You can always throw in hammer curls at the end, but for me, bicep curls have been great. I like to keep my workouts within four to five workouts per session, and my back workout definitely takes me some time because it's very challenging. So I've only kept the bicep curls at the moment. Keep your feet a little bit closer together, hips tucked, so you're not overextending your back either. Hips tucked or tight and your shoulders are not rounded forward and not overextended at the back. Your shoulders, you're just keeping a nice neutral back set up, have your dumbbells to the sides. We begin with these when you're ready to start your uh, bicep curls. You wanna make sure you're not leaning all the way back, but that maybe even you have a little bit of a lean forward and your shoulders are not coming up. So exhale on the come up and extend you don't have to go all the way down just keep constant tension with these and as you come up exhale you do three to four sets of eight to twelve reps depending on the weight that i'm pushing sometimes if i am feeling like i can do more reps i will i won't stop at 12 i'll do 15 if i have to you know but i would rather up the weight on these so i can do less reps i feel like i can do 12 reps very easily it is time to up the weight
With these, I'm more focused on keeping my form very good throughout the movements and making sure that my biceps are in good condition so that I can continue lifting. This is an arm workout that I have been doing for years and I highly recommend it. So I'll do like 20 minutes of cardio on this day. If I am really feeling like I have more energy, I'll push the 30 minutes, but it's usually 20 minutes. The Gorilla Rose really take it out of me. <laughs> The first workout is usually very challenging for me and I like to keep it that way. I like doing the rower on this day too because it's also a back workout. It, it's a full body workout but very back focused. These are the back workouts that I have been doing for years at this point and they have stayed consistent. Like I said, the only newer workout that I have been doing is the Gorilla Rose and they are definitely very challenging. Try the seesaw rows if you don't have kettlebells. Definitely give those a try. Four workouts for an upper body day. It's all you need and some cardio and you will definitely see results if you stay consistent. I hope you enjoyed this video. That is the back routine. We've been doing these workouts for years and we will continue doing these workouts. You can see sometimes I do struggle with these. So you're not alone if you're sorry. <laughs> All right. I absolutely love you. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, hit the like and subscribe button and the notification so you can get some notifications when I upload a new video. And I love you. Bye. <laughs>